Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Peace. Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available in 2022, the album, Dad, shimmy, 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 <laughs> AF. Rock on gold dust for Valentine's Day. What's love got to do, got to do with it? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Sing it with me. Uh-huh. What's love but a second-hand emotion? How are you guys doing today? Oh, we've got so much to talk about. This fan is literally like falling apart. Look at that. It's like, when I was doing my intro, I was like, this stuff is like falling off a fan. I'm like, oh my God. Good thing I have two of them though. So anyway, how are you guys doing today? I have a couple things I need to address, okay? Speaking of Valentine's Day, I am starting to get so many requests for cameos for Valentine's Day. So, I love doing the cameos. If you are wanting a cameo from me for Valentine's Day or for somebody else, make sure that you get those in sooner rather than later. I will just tell you that. Um, that's the first thing, and I just want to say thank you so much, you guys, for continuing to book the cameos. I really, really appreciate it. It means the world to me. The second thing that I want to talk about is... Now I don't remember. Oh, it's right here. Um, I have a birthday shout-out. Okay, so the birthday shout... Was it the second thing I want to shout-out? No, the second thing I want to talk about is... When it is a Wednesday evening and you're all cozy at home and you have your entire pantry and refrigerator stocked with snacks because we're supposed to get a winter storm, why not a drama video? So that's what we're doing tonight. But um, I also have a birthday shout out that I wanna give. So I uh, received this tweet and this is from Kimberly. And Kimberly said, hey Peter, can I get a birthday shout out? My birthday is February 4th and I'm starting my dirty 30s. Love you, and I'm always ready for drama class with my number two pencil. So happy birthday to you, Kimberly. I hope that you have the most magically amazing birthday. Is today the fourth? I don't know. What is today's day? Today's the second. <laughs> I don't even know. It's Groundhog Day. Oh, um, the Groundhog, I have heard, saw his shadow, and so that means we're going to have six more weeks of winter, I guess. Anyway, so there's that. So I don't know what, uh, what <laughs> that's message number three, <laughs> message in a bottle that I had to talk about. So that's that I wanted to talk about. Now, what was the other thing? We're going to talk about uh, Ela Klein and Ethan Klein having a baby in uh, just a second. Congratulations to them. That's amazing. But that's kind of part of my story. So, well, not my story, but the drama story. That I'm talk We're going to talk about Trisha Paytas over here today. Of course we would. But before we do, um, I want to get into something I feel kind of strongly about. And I have to tell you, I know that you guys love the funny haha -ha videos over here. And, and I appreciate that. And I love that. But I also love to share my opinion. Um just based on my life experience about things. And sometimes these videos get a little serious. Um, sometimes, you know, I said at the beginning of the year or the end of last year that <clears throat> if you watch my Peterisms channel that I, where I talk about mistakes that I've made and I read meditations and just share like life lessons and stuff that I was going to be bringing a lot of that over onto this channel as well and I'm kind of merging the two. Today will be probably more of that because I feel like the topics that I'm going to be talking about over here today, which one is mental health, um, I think is very, very serious. And if you watch my videos on a regular basis, you know that I take mental health very, very seriously. Uh, most importantly, I take addiction and recovery very, very seriously um, I, because I've been sober for 27 years and um, I, I feel that mental health and addiction and recovery kind of all go together and in, in kind of in some ways. And so I take them very seriously and, and there's not a, lo a lot of room for joking about those things for me. Um, so I do wanna talk about mental health later in this video. But before I do, I received this comment on my Twitter and somebody basically said, I'm going to need you to stop talking about James Charles. And, well, first of all, I don't know why anybody feels it necessary to come over and tell me what they're going to need me to stop doing, <laughs> okay? Now, I don't know about you, but who runs Bada Town? <laughs> Not that fan, I'll tell you that. Who runs Bada Town? <laughs> Not Master Blaster runs Bada Town. Peter Mon runs Bada Town. This is Peter Mon's channel. Don't be coming over here and telling me what I'm going to need you to do, okay? Look, like I said, 
look below the video, see my name underneath there, and then you're going to need to know that what Peter Mon needs to do is what Peter Mon wants to do, okay? Now, if you feel like something else needs to be done, then I guess you need to start another channel called Johnny B. Strange, and over on Johnny B. Strange, okay, you need to start with your uh, weird uh, uh, feelings and emotions, <laughs> just a secondhand emotion about things, okay? Because this person came over in my Twitter, and what they wanted to tell me was, that I'm going to need to stop talking about James Charles and his preferences for straight men, okay? You know, let me tell you about this, first of all. I have a little bit of an issue with that, all right? And I have talked about this at length. I really have this issue where you see these YouTubers, these influencers, James Charles has done it, Manny MUA has done it, there's been a lot of influencers that have done it, okay, where they fawn over these straight men, and they kind of make it this funny kind of thing, like, couldn't you be gay, blah, 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 blah whatever. I take huge issue with this, okay? That doesn't mean to say that I have never found a heterosexual man sexy in my life or attractive or that I've been attracted to one in my life, right? But I have been so blessed to have heterosexual allies in my life that I wouldn't be here today, okay? If I didn't have these men that stood by my side and loved me unconditionally and were there for me when I needed them, you know, and to cross that line is not a preference, all right? It is, it's not a kink. It's not a fetish. It's disgusting is what it is. And I, and I take huge issue with it, all right? And I think that by normalizing this, by seeing all these people do it, it's the kind of idea of where we call people like three beer queers, okay? Like, I don't like that term. And if we really want to be honest about it, to imply that if somebody is drunk enough, they will do something of that manner is really rather problematic on a very, very serious level. And I don't think we talk enough about that, okay? So, no, it's not funny to me when James Charles or whoever else is hitting up straight men and these kinds of things. It's not a fetish. It's not kink. And it's not a preference, okay? Gay men liking, um, uh, gay men liking straight men is not a preference because heterosexual men are heterosexual. And yes, I'm very, very aware of Kinsey's, uh, you know, realm of sexuality and all of that kind of stuff, okay? But, you know, it's, it's just really disrespectful. And I want to say that this person also referenced, they're like, your husband's much more masculine than you and you have a preference and blah, 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 whatever, okay? Well, I can tell you that when I started getting interested in my husband, it wasn't his masculinity that I was attracted to. But to be attracted to somebody that is more masculine or more feminine, but is also gay, I can tell you that my my husband identifies as gay, okay? So that's a completely different thing than to go towards somebody that is straight and says I'm straight and has set that boundary and then you continue to go there, you know? I, I don't really understand it. And, and it's one thing when it's on the level of a celebrity crush, like that is so completely different to me. But when it's like you're actually going after these people, like it's, I, I do take huge issue with it. And I think this is the problem is that, you know, I came out in 1990. I came out right after my 18th birthday. And, um, you know, to come out before that, I was terrified. I was terrified that if I came out, I would just basically have my ASS beat, right? And it was a scary time to come out. And I came out into the world of the AIDS crisis. And it was right on the heels of that. And I can remember going out to bars and people would talk about people that had passed away from AIDS and things like that. That's why I don't take AIDS with any kind of joking manner either, right? And um, because I heard the stories and I have several friends of mine that are HIV positive and have shared their stories with me and are advocates for that community. And, you know, one of the things that I was taught early on was to respect the homage of the people that came before you, okay? And to, or to pay homage to the people that came before you. You know, the people that were at Stonewall, the people that fought for the human rights and people that voted or people that um, fought for gay rights and things like that. And to respect respect that, you know? And we have to also respect our heterosexual allies as well, men and women. And, you know, one of the most amazing um, movies that I have ever seen about this, as I know this has gone on long too long, but is The Normal Heart. And it's talking about, you know, the uh, gay men's health crisis in New York City and how at the time that it opened, they really needed the support from lesbians that were not being directly affected by AIDS except for the friends that they had and the family that they had. You know, and it's more like respecting the community that you have built around you. So no, I don't think it's a preference and I don't think it's funny and I don't take it lightly and I will continue to call it out when I see it. So I wanted to 
address that on there. All right, now into some very, very happy news um, because I do think it's important to acknowledge happy news over here as well. Ethan and Ela Klein um, gave, well, Ela Klein gave birth to um, their uh, baby today and his name is Bruce. And Bruce was born on 2-2-22. And I was actually on the Trish, uh, the Trishy Land Reddit where it talks about Trisha Paytas over there because that's what we're going to talk about. And people were talking about how Trisha Paytas got married on Ela Klein's, uh, you know, birthday weekend. I know when I mention it, people are like, oh, it wasn't like she did it on purpose. Okay, yeah. Pull this leg and it plays Jingle Bells. So anyway, but people are like, no, she didn't get married. Whatever. I mean, there's 52 weekends in a year and that's the weekend that she picked. Right. Okay. So anyway, but they were saying like, how iconic is it that Ethan Klein and Ela Klein's son was born on two two twenty two, and that Trisha tried to you know get one up on this whole wedding thing, but then the baby was born on two two twenty two. I love the name Bruce, by the way. So I think that's so cute. But anyway, so their baby was born. Happy birthday to uh, Bruce Klein. You were born today into the world. That's exciting. I always think, you know, like, um, with my my friends, like, we just had a couple that we're friends with that they recently, in November, had a child. And I always think, you know, when I see, like, the pictures or we, you know, visit them or whatever, I think, God, like, the world of possibilities that, you know, this, this small little child has. Like, what could they go on to be? You know, all of this. Could they be a movie star? Could they, you know, who will they love? And what children will they have? And, you know, all the kind of exciting things that they hold in the life, you know, going forward. Forward and it's just, it's amazing. So anyway, so congratulations to that. Now to talk about the Trisha Paytas uh, drama. Trisha Paytas had a live stream planned today, but was getting so much backlash. I think she set a premiere up saying that um, she was going to do this live stream later tonight. And then so many people were like, so you're going to do a live stream on the day that your nephew was born to take away attention from Ethan and Ela having their baby today. So you're gonna do a live stream. And in fact, over on in front of me's room, Caroline over there, hey Caroline, um, how are you? I have to tell you a funny story, okay? So I did not know this and somebody commented, I don't know if I've shared this in a video or not. I did not know this, but sh somebody shared in a comment video or in a comment section of one of my videos when I was talking about this, they said, of course you love front of me's room um, because she did all of your merch. And I was like, no, she didn't. I know who designed my merch logos and it wasn't front of me's room, right? So they like, you know, post things about me every once in a while, which is very, very nice. And I appreciate it. So, and, and Caroline can tell you, this is the God, uh, this is the God's honest truth. Okay. So I reached out to her and I said, well, I think it was on Instagram or maybe it was, I think it was, I, anyway, I don't know. But I said, hey, I'm getting comments that people are saying that you're Caroline who did my merch. Are you? And she said, yeah, you didn't know that. And I said, no, because you don't follow me. So why? And she goes, oh my God, I didn't even know that I followed you. So it is one and the same. And she did amazing merch logos for me. Um, I maybe haven't heard do if she wants to, some new ones, because I want to come out with a new line of merch with new sayings, like my battery has died and stuff. So anyway, so Caroline has always been so kind to me and I love my go check out my merch she did an amazing job um so go check out my merch and my merch shop but anyway so I was like reading the comments over there and stuff and uh, so anyway Tr Trisha what was I gonna say about the front of me's room people were saying oh oh Caroline she um she re like she edited the picture where Trisha said I I'm back did you miss me or something like that and underneath instead she put um I'm an aunt now or something like that it was real funny but anyway so Trisha apparently canceled this live stream uh, who knows why okay um I don't know if the buttered noodles weren't ready or what but back in the day people talk about these buttered noodles Trisha Paytas actually got me started back in the day on butter not only buttered noodles but also the corn you remember that you put in the microwave the jolly green giant corn and then you put extra butter on it oh my god chef's kiss it, it's so good okay i mean trisha pitas pitas trisha pious oh my god a new one trisha pacman trisha pious trisha pious is not right about a lot of things but one thing that trisha pious is right about is butter noodles <laughs> i mean there's a lot that we can say that she's not right about okay but butter noodles and buttered corn she is 100 percent correct about so anyway 
So, um, anyway, so she apparently canceled this live stream. She canceled it herself. She canceled herself. <laughs> she canceled her live stream because all these people were coming at her and saying, oh, she has to have attention and blah, 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 blah whatever, okay? Basically, what it is is it backfired on her, okay? I don't know. I, I was kind of speculating when I saw that she was going live that she thought that I, I thought she was going to get in this live stream and and get in there and say, you know, we're really happy for Ela and Ethan and congratulations and whatever. And then basically she would, it would be her making the drama channels eat their words or whatever. But she didn't get in her live stream. I'm sure she'll say that at some point. I don't even know if she has tweeted. I didn't even look before I got on here to see if she has tweeted anything out. Hold on a second. Let me see to see. I mean, you don't have to do it publicly for it to mean anything, right? But let's just see if she's tweeted anything out to uh, Moses today and 18 hours. Nope, she hasn't posted anything. In, well, let's see. Tweet response. Nope, she hasn't tweeted anything to Ethan and Ela over the birth of her own nephew. Um, I don't know what Moses is. Let's see. Moses Hackman. I don't know. I don't know what his Instagram is. It's something like WADA. <laughs> bottled water. Is that what his Instagram is called? I don't know. But anyway, um, so she canceled her live stream. Okay. So here's some more serious issue though that I want to talk about. And I saw that Rich Lux did a whole video about this. Rich Lux has all of the video footage on it. So go check out Rich Lux's video. He just posted it today. I think like four or five hours ago. And hey, Rich, how are you? And, um, so Rich posted this whole video about this. He told me, he said, girl, he said, just make this video. I already made it. So it's got all the video footage over on it. You can go check out Rich's video. And then you can see what he has to say. Then you can come back over here and you can see what I had to say. So anyway, Rich and Deaf Noodles found these clips of basically where Trisha Paytas has come out time and time again and said that she has DID, dissociative identity disorder. And then she retracted the statement and said she didn't have DID. Now she's come out again in this underwater mukbang that her and Moses did. And she's saying that she has DID again. Okay. Um, I was under the assumption and maybe I'm wrong but so please educate me in the comment section below did doctor didn't dr. Drew come out and tell her that she didn't have DID I thought that was something that happened with the front of me saying or whatever okay but this is where to me this is a very serious thing all right and I take mental health very very seriously and um, you know I have friends of mine that have diagnoses all over the place and they it's really hard for them to get appropriate services it's really expensive for them to get appropriate services services on and on and on right so I don't know what Trisha Paytas's true diagnoses are okay I mean it's interesting because I see a lot of other youtubers talking to their therapists online and doing all this kind of stuff but Trisha Paytas just says that they she does that but then there's like she she says statements and she says diagnoses and she pulls them back and whatever okay you know I just want to say something that a couple years ago in a video that I did, I said something about, I don't know if Trisha Paytas is lying about this or not. And then Trisha Paytas came out and said that I was a horrible person because I said this. You know, flash forward today, I don't think we know if anything that Trisha Paytas says is the truth or not, okay? And this is the problem with her. I mean, she, that's literally the epitome of anything that she puts out. Well, it's a bigger issue when you're talking about this mental health stuff because there were so many people that were offended by Trisha Paytas allegedly trolling the DID community and these there's whole channels dedicated to this okay so dissociative identity disorder is what is used to be known as multiple personality disorder why it's such a huge issue is that and I actually have a very close friend of mine that has DID and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second um but why it is such a huge issue is that widely among psychiatrists for years and years and years and years, there was this back and forth where a lot of psychiatrists didn't even believe that multiple personality disorder or DID was a real thing. They didn't even really believe it. And you have to go to get like to get a disability for DID is like so, so, so difficult. And people that have DID that can't effectively work because they can't leave their apartments or their homes most of the time have to jump all these hoops to to go see psychiatrists, go to support groups, be, you know, go into like, be in, in a hospital situation to be evaluated and on and on and on. All these things to get disability or to get appropriate medical treatment or to be referred to the right, you know, case manager and things like that. So to just get in a video and just throw these terms around is really, really, really uh, really um, negligent to her audience, period, in the story, okay? Just to say, well, I'm going to, and I don't know if this is what she did. I don't know. Like I said, okay, I don't know. I haven't seen any proof of this diagnosis, and I haven't not seen any proof of it, so I don't know, right? But to say you have something, and then to come out and say you don't have something, and then to come back and say you have something, seems to me, and then to say, 
Well, I have different personality changes. We all have different personality changes. That's completely something different, right? It's totally, totally something different. And I really feel like, it, I really hope that Trisha Paytas isn't trolling this community again because there were so many people that were really, really offended by this and really hurt by this too. Fans of Trisha Paytas that had watched her for years and years and years that identified with this or identify with other parts of, you know, mental health. And it just makes me really, really sad. And I was actually thinking about my friend today and I was like, okay, I know I have this book somewhere in this house and I thought it was over in this uh, cabinet that we have over here, this armoire. And I like opened it and it was right there and I couldn't believe it. My friend years ago, and no, I have not read this book, she gave me this book and she was like, if you want to know what DID is exactly like, she was like, this is the best example of what DID, and I'm just telling you from my friend, I don't know anything about this, I haven't read this book, but for those people that want to read a fictional account of what it's like, is this book called, by Matt Ruff, Set This House in Order, okay? And so let me tell you what it says in the back of this book. Andrew Gage and his new colleagues, Perry Driver, both suffer from multiple personality disorder. Andrew has managed to impose order on his daily life, whereas Penny lives in chaos, constantly blacking out as various personalities struggle for control of her body. When we first meet Penny, she has just woken up in a strange house, in a strange bed, lying beside a man she has never seen before. And it goes on. So anyway... My friend, you know, Trisha Paytas said some things in her, when I was watching these clips today in Rich Lux's videos, which I know are completely not true. She was saying that there's no good treatment for DID and things like that. My friend lives a pretty normal life and does go to therapy regularly and does have a psychiatrist and a case manager and on this all this kind of stuff. And so that's just absolutely not true to say there are no good therapies for DID. That just is not the case. Um, it's a struggle to get those therapies. It's a struggle to get people to take you seriously and all that kind of, and get into the right people that are knowledgeable about DID. Because it's not just about going to any psychiatrist. It's not just about going to any therapist. It's about going to a therapist that is trained to work with clients that have DID. It's about going to a psychiatrist that is knowledgeable and is trained about DID. It's not about just getting in a mukbang and saying, well, you've seen me switch. Well, you've seen me switch, Moses. Don't you remember? And Moses is like, yeah, but it's different. And I'm like, so anyway, if this is what Trisha Paytas is doing again, I hope she's not. I hope for her it's it's 100% honest and that she is telling the truth in all of this and whatever. But if this is her attempting to troll again, this is like even worse than the religions and I really hope that's that. And I also really hope that Trisha Paytas can for one second step outside of her need to have fame and attention and be a human being and maybe step back for her own, uh, you know, her own needs in life and maybe wish somebody else, even if you don't get along with that person, civility, and good luck on their child's birth, because I think that would be a really nice thing to do. She is his, she is going to be his aunt, you know, it's like, could you at least, you know, and I don't know what's happened behind the scenes, maybe she has, I hope she has, she doesn't have to do it publicly for, you know, that to happen, but... Uh, I, I, I hope knowing Trisha back in the day when, you know, she would show different text messages between her and Ethan and things like that, that she has reached out to them individually because it's just not always the Trisha show. So anyway, let me know what you think about all of that in the comment section below. I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.